Buddhism was introduced to Sri Lanka in the 3rd century BC and soon it took deep roots in the island nation when Buddhism spread beyond India one of the first nations where it reached was Sri Lanka Sri Lanka is considered to have the oldest continuing Buddhist civilization the Pali Canon was first written in Sri Lanka here Buddhism has survived repeated invasions by colonial forces large scale massacres of monks burnings and destructions of monasteries and persecution of the lay disciples at multiple times the persecution of buddhism on the island was so complete that hardly a couple of ordained monks survived on the island and sri lanka had to import monks from other countries like thailand and myanmar to save buddhism from extinction let's understand how buddhism reached this beautiful island how it was challenged by indian kings and later by european colonial powers and missionaries and how it revived from its ashes according to the early chronicles that tell about the history of sri lanka prince vijay and his 700 followers from the kalinga region of india were the first historical rulers of the island prince vijay was banished from lata his hometown in india and he arrived in sri lanka on the same day as the parinirvana of buddha in the 5th century bc before his arrival the nation was inhabited by yakchas and nagas the local tribes residing on the island prince vijay was the eldest son of a chhatriya king singbahu of the kingdom of singpura in the eastern part of india the descendants of prince vijay and his followers were later known as singalese after reaching sri lanka prince vijay married a tribal princess named kueni and with her support soon became the ruler of the island later he abandoned his wife along with his two kids and married a princess from the kingdom of mathura in north india the new bride became the queen of sri lanka vijay became the first ruler of the singalese the pre buddhist sri lanka followed different religions including ancient hinduism jainism and animism between the 5th and 3rd centuries bc buddhism was spreading very fast in india it gained large acceptance during the period of king ashoka of the maurya dynasty ashoka became the king in the year 268 bc he converted to buddhism and became an ardent follower of dhamma especially after witnessing the bloodshed of the kalinga war which resulted in the killing of 100000 people and 150000 taken as prisoners he allowed his son prince mahinda and daughter princess sangmita to become monks when they were 20 and 18 years of age respectively the third council of buddhism was held in the capital city of patliputra under the patronage of king ashoka during this council under the leadership of monk mogali putta tissa the pali canon of the theravada was finalized in its current form in oral tradition several important decisions were undertaken at the council including sending the buddhist missions to different parts of the known world across asia europe and africa it was decided that the mission to sri lanka will be sent under the leadership of mahinda son of king ashoka arhat mahinda was 32 years old when he started his journey to sri lanka in 250 bc from the city of vidisha in central india at that time the island was ruled by king devanampiya tissa on the full moon day of the jet month mahinda reached the misaka hill presently known as mahintale situated near the ancient city of anuradhapura king devanampiya tissa went to the mahintale hills 
on a hunting expedition with a large party of followers. On seeing Mahinda and other elders in yellow robes, he approached them. With compassion, Mahinda gave a discourse to the king. After listening to the discourse, the king surrendered to the Dhamma. The next day, at the invitation of King Devanapiyatissa, Mahinda and other elders reached the capital city of Anuradhapura. After preaching to the king and the people of Anuradhapura, Mahinda expressed his desire to return to Mihintale. The king requested them to stay in the capital city for a few days. He gifted the Sangha the royal park Mahamegha. The Mahavihara, the earlier center of Buddhism on the island, was established at the park. Mahinda spent 26 days at the Mahamegha park and then returned to Mihintale for his rainy retreat, where the Chatyagri Vihara, another significant monastery on the island, was established. Another important monument established during the initial days of Buddhism on the island was the Thuparama Stupa, which enshrined the relic collarbone of Buddha. Several women from the city of Anuradhapura wanted to enter the order of nuns, and a request was sent to King Ashoka to seek the help of ordained nuns so that women from the island seeking truth could also be ordained. Ashoka sent his daughter Sangmitta to the island on the recommendations of Mahinda. Thus the order of nuns was established on the island nation. King Ashoka also decided to send a branch of the Bodhi tree to Lanka. He planted a branch of the Bodhi tree under which Buddha had attained enlightenment in a golden bowl and sent the sapling along with Sangmitta. The sapling was planted in the Mahamega Park of Anuradhapura. The holy tree is still the site of worship for millions of Buddhists across the world. The Bodhi tree of Anuradhapura is the oldest historical tree in the world. Buddhism spread rapidly in Sri Lanka. Thousands of men and women joined the order of monks and nuns respectively. The Sangha received support from successive kings for several centuries. Buddhism reached every corner of the island in a very short time. The Pali canons were not written for a long time, though the art of writing was known to the people of the island. The ancient scriptures were learnt and recited through memory and preserved through oral tradition. It took a disaster to commit the Pali canon in written form. In 103 BC, during the reign of great king Vatagamini Abhaya, a Brahmin named Tissa from the south of the island revolted against the king. Taking advantage of the uncertain situation, a Tamil army from the south of India invaded Sri Lanka and defeated the Lankan king. King Abhaya fled and lived in exile for 14 years. This long period was disastrous for Buddhism in Lanka. The island was hit by a severe famine and thousands of people died on the island. The monasteries, including the Mahavihara of Anuradhapura, were abandoned. More than 20,000 monks died in the forests due to lack of food, while other thousands died in different monasteries across the island. Some fortunate ones were able to leave the country and migrated to India. Because of the mass deaths of ordained monks during the famine, there was a fear that the teachings would be lost in Sri Lanka forever. Only a few monks who could recite the scriptures were able to survive. The bad phase of Buddhism got over only after 14 years when Abhya regained the throne. One of the first things that he did after returning to the throne was to demolish a monastery of a Nigantha or Jainasatik named Giri who mocked the king 
while he was fleeing from the invaders. He built the famous Abhyagri Vihara over the Jain monastery. The Buddhist monks realized that the famine had put a question mark over the preservation of the scriptures through oral tradition. The monks assembled at the Mahavihara in Anuradhapura and a convocation of monks was held which was patronized by King Abhaya. The teachings were recited and written on palm leaves. The Tripitika that is Vinaya, Sutta and Abhidhamma was written in book form by the hard work of 500 monks after the convocation. During the 5th century AD, the Indian monk Buddha Ghosh wrote the commentaries on the Tripitika. One of his most famous works is Vishuddhi Makkha or the path of purification. Deepavansha and Mahavansha are the other two great works which give a detailed account of the history of Sri Lanka. Deepavansha or the Chronicles of the Island was written from the 3rd century AD to the 4th century AD. Mahavansha or the Great Chronicle was written in the 5th century AD. The next several centuries saw continuous invasions by Chola and Pandya kings from the southern part of India. King Vijay Bahu first defeated the Cholas and became the king of Sri Lanka in 1070 AD. He made Polonarua his capital and the period saw large-scale repair and restoration of Buddhist monuments. The next centuries saw the revival and strengthening of Buddhism on the island. The most serious threat to Buddhism came during the early 16th century with the arrival of Portuguese forces in Sri Lanka. The invaders had no tolerance for Buddhism. The period was perhaps the darkest episode in the history of Buddhism in Sri Lanka. The invaders propagated Christianity through twin methods of inducement and punishment. Those who converted to Christianity were given royal favors, while those who declined to convert were given brutal punishments. People were thrown into rivers infested with crocodiles or tortured to death in different ways. Buddhist monks and monasteries were specially targeted by them. The punishment for wearing the yellow robe of the monk was death. Several monasteries were looted and burned across the island. The large libraries full of Buddhist manuscripts were burned by them. According to some accounts, when the Portuguese were finally expelled from the island in 1658, only five fully ordained monks survived on the island. Dharmpal, the grandson of King Bhuvanik Bahu VI of the Kote Kingdom, converted to Christianity and became the first Christian Sinhalese king of the island. In 1592, Vimla Dharm Surya I became the king and ruled for 12 years from the capital city of Kandy. He was favored by the Portuguese because during his early days, he was sent to the Portuguese Goa by his father, where he got educated and baptized into Christianity. At that time, Buddhism was on the verge of disappearing from the island. He revolted against the colonial masters out of love for his country and the religion of his forefathers. He restored several destroyed Buddhist monuments. He found out that there was not even a single ordained Buddhist monk left on the entire island. And he sent a request to the king of Myanmar to obtain monks to revive Buddhism. Several monks came from Myanmar who ordained monks in Sri Lanka in 1597. Portuguese were expelled and replaced by the Dutch invaders during the 17th century. The Dutch were more concerned about commerce and they understood that the most important factor in the promotion of trade and commerce was peace in the country. However, Buddhism continued to decline during the Dutch period as well. In 1751, Kirti Sri Rasingha became the king of Kandy. At that time, 
not a single ordained monk was left on the island with the support of the dutch he sent an embassy to king dhammika of thailand and invited bhikkhus from thailand to revive the ordination of buddhist monks on the island the thai monks ordained hundreds of monks on the island in 1796 the dutch were defeated by the british and they surrendered their colonies to them sri vikramara singha was the last king of sri lanka in 1815 the british invaded the kingdom of kandy and after the defeat of the king the kingdom of kandy was incorporated into the british crown this finished the long line of sinhalese crown on the island after more than 2300 years which started in the 5th century bc with king vijay the british rule witnessed large scale and intense missionary activities on the island and they were active in towns and villages converting buddhists to christianity it was during these difficult times that a brilliant buddhist monk named gunananda challenged the christian missionaries for open debates he had studied in christian schools and was well versed in both christian and buddhist scriptures the christian clergy were very confident of the win and accepted the challenge these open debates ended in the victory of the buddhist monk the christian scholars left the debate defeated by the brilliant monk the debates especially the last one at panadura in 1873 attracted large media coverage the ceylon times covered the debates extensively the media reports and books on the debate attracted the attention of colonel henry steel alcott in america he was a customs lawyer in new york and in 1880 he arrived in sri lanka to gain knowledge of buddhism he converted to buddhism and worked extensively for the revival of buddhism in sri lanka he traveled across the island promoting buddhism and opening several buddhist schools across the island another major name in the revival of buddhism in sri lanka was anagrik dhanpal he was born in a christian native family in sri lanka and was named don david hivavitharne later he converted to buddhism he worked very closely with henry alcott besides sri lanka he contributed a lot to the revival of buddhism in india he traveled extensively to india and initiated the restoration of several important buddhist sites across the country he founded the mahabodhi society in bodhgaya in india the revival movement of buddhism gained momentum in sri lanka after the independence of the country in 1948 today 70% of the population of sri lanka follows the path of dhamma there are around 6000 monasteries across the island housing more than 15000 monks buddhism was declared the state religion under article 9 of the sri lankan constitution if you found value in this video please give it a thumbs up we are constantly coming out with new videos on the life of buddha and the buddhist heritage if the information provided by the video was useful please subscribe to the channel for similar informative videos on buddhism please share your thoughts on the revival of buddhism in sri lanka in the comment section below